we'll pivot then to our last pool, which is yeah. pool one, perversely. Yeah. But uh, yes, pool well, one that's the game that's on Sunday. Yeah, um, yeah. We uh, we both have Sunday games, don't we? Like uh, Leinster and Toulouse. Yeah, because it's there. Oh, everything's simultaneous. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. So it's. And well, we'll I suppose we go over the game first, Leinster. Leinster and Toulouse. That was a. It, we were at it. It was an incredible game. It was great yeah. atmosphere yeah. in the RDS. Love to hear that. Mm-hmm. Love to hear that. Can't get enough of that. Um, um, Molly Malone was being rung out. And, yeah, which is yeah. rare enough that we get to yeah. that. It's only ever towards the tail end of games, and it was yeah. immediately responded by a, a lovely Chesman try. <laughs> but, no, hang on. Well, no, it, no, it wasn't even way earlier. Yeah, it did long, actually. Yeah, it was only earlier. the last rendition, the yeah. kind of slightly hubristic rendition that resulted in an immediate. Well, it was the, the counting down. Yeah, the counting true. down the last ten seconds that made Cheslin score that try. <laughs> it was also a beautiful offload, but yes. the game was wrapped up. You'll never, never see a less consequential try, no. um, because Leinster thoroughly outplayed Toulouse, and it was yeah. very, very impressive, very satisfying viewing from yep. from our point of view, because we were nervous. Mm. And Leinster, as some of the, the lads were pointing to, they did that thing in pretty much where everyone was bleeding. they were just bigging up Toulouse. Yeah. Of course, like Toulouse are great. We're scared of Toulouse, and as soon as that tends to happen, which we even lose sight of a lot of. The time and particularly in the RDS though whenever Leinster are on that wavelength where all the media is about how great the other team is mm-hmm. how dangerous they are they end up putting in displays like this yeah. same thing happened with Montpellier those games we were hearkening on earlier on yeah, when yeah. they were coming to town it was all big mm-hmm. enough the superstars yeah, the names yeah. and then just trouncing them yeah. in, in, a, in making it so awkward and holding the ball for mm-hmm. a long time which is why like I, I, was, I was dead wrong in terms of my pre, um, in my winning conditions for, uh, for Leinster I was completely off base compared to what they did I was suggesting aerial bombardment and a bit more physical defensively but no what they actually did was just hold the ball mm. ad nauseum and make them make tackles yeah. as well as whenever they and were on the offensive really good line speed but also jackling stop yeah. slowing down stifling to, to, yeah to lose like it was almost like they were in the muddy floor like James Lowe was in Bath yeah. they were just whenever they got the ball they were they were tired they were carrying their legs stuff as much as they're trying to emphasize fitness over there mm-hmm. they're like a few rungs beneath Leinster on the ladder of, sure. of getting there yeah and Leinster just with all of their big men they they made their made them constantly in that defensive mindset and Toulouse to their credit really stepped up they wanted to win this yes, game they did they had um their their club had flown a load of media in mm-hmm. and flown a load of sponsors in giving well, them we, free were sat, tickets. we were sat next to a bunch of Toulouse fans who were lovely as well and very yeah, yeah. there were a lot a lot who travelled but the the actual <laughs> club had flown in a bunch of sponsors and a bunch of media people put them up in a hotel getting them in tickets to the game because they were feeling it yes and they came the team were responsive to that they came in hungry and they stuck to their sets they still isolated like what we had said after that that first game when they won 28 27 they had isolated and um, james ryan as a huge source of mm-hmm. go forward they also they took, did tyg furlong they took basically. him yeah. they took tyg furlong and they they almost two-man coverage them mm-hmm. and um oh. and, and then yeah key and healy came into the game that's amazing where, yeah that's well, what it left space us. for a lot of key and healy mm-hmm. carries sean cronin carried very well as mm-hmm. well and it just yeah the emphasis was on it was also like players. we did go to ryan and we did go to furlong on occasion but it would, those were always on loose break denny plays mm-hmm. the set plays for leinster were all about getting healy getting cronin getting conan fardy sometimes fardy, as well uh, yeah a, a, a quite a bit more than usual on yeah. the ball yeah going forward just surprising to, to lose with those kinds of plays and, and letting them know that our whole pack can do that mm-hmm. and then they just had to make tackle after tackle after tackle and like the highlights the highlights that they put up for the game on, on, on BT's YouTube channel after it started at 30 minutes uh, when it was 3 all yeah. and still got that opening try but so much happened in yeah. that well, like the very minutes. first play was yeah. like a, a flowing end to end we went up to one end got pilfered got steeled after a load of phases yeah. then at the 22 they broke out mm. came all the way to our 22 before yeah. Josh Van Fleer made a great steal yeah. and it was just like, like beautiful yeah, flowing in, rugby all before, into, like yeah. near, near test level yeah. atmosphere in the place and certainly from the hits and collisions yeah. it felt like it, it on the it field was, yeah and it was definitely yeah. like as much as you, you can like you wouldn't even know the difference just us talking about it but it was like it was next level intensity as yeah. far as compared to any other game on the weekend yeah. everything was more ferocious everything was more physical everything was quicker Charlie Femoina had a storm over a game and was causing Leinster all kinds of problems and then got broken down and beaten yeah. and had to leave oh, the field like, all before the highlights start you know? yeah, yeah um, 30 minutes in he was gone and it was like um, he was playing well he had a one big scrum that won the penalty yeah, as well yeah. got the better of Keane Healy but also hurt his shoulder in a contact and then that never went away yeah, and it yeah, became yeah. increasingly a factor and it was off a scrum like we don't know like we love scrums 
can't speak on any authority other than Keegan Healy when he sees a bit of weakness like as he did because yeah, yeah. he was down treating his shoulder before and then afterwards he was broke up yeah, so yeah. I don't know the ins and outs of what he's doing but it must be something monstrous yes because that Charlie Fanguin is, is like a, an amazing scrummager and a class player and a monster of a man yeah. and he was off broken and bruised after 30 odd minutes yeah, and yeah. it was like that was the kind of atmosphere that was mm. going on and, and it, was, it wasn't just him like John no. kind of was struggling they were all it. feeling it yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was, it was totally like it was it was clinical and ruthless and then the tries came and yeah. the tries came functionally and yeah. it was it was all mm-hmm. very very good Toulouse's defense never really broke down no you know it just got caught with uh you know they, 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 it was it was just slowly beaten down for that opening try they got caught out with a nice little clever having been a bit lateral lengths to go short and then short and then short again and then crossfield kick to dave yeah. who scores it perfectly yeah um and then uh the cronin try was another example of just beating them down and beating yeah. them down and beating but them i down. think the, the winning of the game was probably that dave carney try coupled with a few phrases later there was a drop ball when the dart that was really mm. not even pressured and it was mm. also like you were making the point that they shouldn't have taken ramos off from yeah. 10 they should have moved him to fullback taken medar who is the older man who has had a lot of game time this season already He's not as fit as, as young Ramos. And Ramos is perfectly competent in the backfield. He yeah. probably should have been under that ball. And he wasn't. He was off the pitch. Mm. And he dropped that ball. And I mean, collectively, you could feel it. Because we were obviously next to Toulouse fans too. But you did feel the sense in the ground then that the RDS crowd were getting more into it. That, those were when the songs came. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, this is that here we go. That was definitely massive. Another yeah. big set was, um, uh, was, was when Toulouse finally had their crack at our line mm-hmm. this was towards the end of the game this was after the the, the um, Cronin, Cronin try going yeah. so it was three tries to none mm-hmm. um, and they really sp- needed something yeah it was yeah. whatever it was 22-6 they mm-hmm. wanted to try to get them sort of back into the game and they kept hammering away and hammering away and hammering away they got a bit narrow sometimes but Leinster had resourced the width the width of the pitch pretty well mm-hmm. and Leinster just kept defending it was very reminiscent for me as a Leinster fan of, of the the Titanic battle that happened between Claremont and Leinster and Bordeaux back yes, in 2012 yeah, in the semi-final. Huge defensive sets, I big players, what big was, tackles. Yeah, what was running through my head as I was, you know, screaming Leinster, Leinster in the stands was was um, that whole set, and then I was remembering that team, and it was like Jamie Heaslip at eight, and Sean, Sean O'Brien. O'Brien was big, and, and Brad Thorne was in that team mm. from the second row, and I was just wondering to myself, do these boys actually, you know, do they cut the water of those boys of that great, probably greatest ever Leinster team and greatest ever Leinster win yeah. uh, away in Bordeaux? Mm-hmm. And they, they did, you know, they held Toulouse. Toulouse a very competent team themselves, kept oh, going and going and going. They dangerous all over yeah. the team and they were dangerous in that mm-hmm. set and they were just, they were shut down. And eventually and, it was a big James Tracy steal. Yeah, that the bench it. man. It's great to see, like the yeah. impact, the impact from the bench was Him huge. And Porter. Porter and, yeah. and Gibson Park who got the bonus point then yeah. with quick thinking after, and an, was, after an Andrew Porter steal yes well that was yeah. it like it wasn't it wasn't like their defence broke down they were in attack mode and Gibson Park saw that went quick and yeah. there was space out wide and it was just like yeah it was it, That's, a yeah. great try to get but it was also like a lovely pass we're talking about gorgeous in teams, pass. teams passes off the left some players can't do it that was a big 35 yard pass yeah. off the left and in wind Finn, it was Finn, a windy day. Finn did it as well on the weekend yeah. uh, Joey using the left peg it was a good week yeah. for, for weaker sides yeah. weaker side techers yeah. and um, yeah it was it was it was brilliant brilliant work from Leinster mm-hmm. uh, there to get the bonus points Ches and Colby still a threat though oh yeah and he demonstrated uh, that with a classy try that uh that kind of served us right again rem- reminiscent of that moment in the Scarlets the Pro 14 final last year where like the whole crowd in the Aviva Stadium were busy singing counting down the clock and singing Championes Championes yeah. and then like almost immediately after in a direct response to far too much hubris that's not the, not the great sign yeah, it's yeah. just yeah coast to coast try time yeah. and that happened again yeah. and that's a bit disappointing but it's like obviously mm-hmm. I don't begrudge Toulouse their try they were probably no. good for it um, yeah. but it was Did- like it was just a great contest and Toulouse yeah, it just didn't fall for them. That picture you were talking about last week about what you want to be seeing, it did come to pass. There were drop balls, mm-hmm. offloads didn't stick. Entomac got schooled Entomac a little bit. Entomac got schooled a bit. We haven't touched on Gary Ringrose yet, oh, by the way. We have to. Man of the match, Gary Ringrose, yeah. and boy was he. Our main concerns were were not unfounded because we, like particularly last season, there was a lot of, of time spent with a back line that consisted of Luke McGrath, Ross Byrne, with Rory O'Loughlin, uh, in that little axis there and even if Gary they lost horrendous they, games they lost yeah. really badly and just did like you were saying struggle to get things going either on attack or defence there were mm-hmm. some gape leaking holes through there as well and like bar a few occasions Ross Byrne did get sat down at one point for a very nearly try yes. when, by Toulouse uh, by who that was, was that Guy, 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 Guy,
just, that was a man who should be in a squad yeah. sitting down a man who should also be in a squad yes um, yeah two two strange omissions as far as Six Nations selections but, uh, I loved I loved, I loved Ross Burns taking it to the line I think like yeah. it's massively improved his ability to play with Luke McGrath exactly just the fact that he yeah, runs that was the worry like we, yeah, we yeah. cited it last week do feel that Gibson Park is a better match just purely because he does flick those passes further forward and gets Ross yeah. Burns moving forward but that's been one of the main learnings I've seen from Ross Byrne is just his willingness to take the line. It was also one of the first things that happened because Toulouse were shutting off the outside mm. but leaving him a bit of space yeah. and he wasn't doing the panicky slight yeah. 10 thing of just either kicking it away or throwing mm. the pass that wasn't on. He took it, was, it to the line. Yeah. He took a few high shots. They, they took a few hits. Uh, they have picked their men who they wanted to hit in mm. Leinster and drive backwards and Ross Byrne wasn't one. Yeah. So Ross Byrne always had that option. Yeah. He was just always one man on him sort of yeah and, and he could if with yeah. a bit of footwork get the winning yeah. or, or at least parody in that contact and, and get yeah. ball yeah. and yeah and that, that was it was good to see from him because yeah. like, there's a there's a nice calm off him speak, complimenting Carberry on his, his sense of calm in, in the in the chaos Ross Byrne has a bit of that as well totally. a fair bit of that and yeah, like, yeah. the techerful delivery of that crossfield kick to Dave Kearney was symptomatic of that he's always had that in his he's game got a beautiful boot on beautiful really does really does yeah. and that's where the problem li- maybe lied last year or in his breakout years where like he's come through just leaned on a little leaned bit, little bit cause, yeah. like his 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 main point in certainly in schoolboy uh, rugby I actually remember seeing him play a few schoolboy games was uh, he had a great boot then too yeah. and he was really good at picking corners which is not necessarily how most schoolboy games go yeah, like kicking yeah. corners wasn't a big thing but he was distinguishing himself as a 10 like that so yeah for the first season he was a little too deep and he kicked a little too often which isn't the Leinster way no. but his passing game has improved but it, like the main thing is that he is actually quite physical and he does take it to the line yeah. and that was that was a, a key difference but also like can't shift focus too far away from what Gary Ringrose allowed him to do with yeah, that as yeah. well because like particularly on defence he was all over everything. He was yeah. literally shutting down all that Toulouse had. And Toulouse had a lot. Yeah. Like there were times when Kobe was dangerously tracking there across was, and was, he was covering. Yeah, yeah. Like Ring Rose was the man watching him like a hawk. Yeah. Everyone else can fall into place as soon as that's happening. A really great moment that we could see clearly from our seats mm-hmm. in the south stand was when Chesney was just tracking across the field. And Kobe, there's nobody like him in world rugby for he's just on the ball and you're just terrified. Yeah. He's going to do something. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and mean, he was just <laughs> dancing and dancing. And Gary just tracked him the whole way. Mm-hmm. never bought in yeah. never shot just tracked him tracked him tracked him and if you go forward in any way if you try and list outside me I've got you mm-hmm. if you try and step me you're not gonna yeah. I'm here I'm not going forward I'm not leaning in and he was just watched him the whole way and Chesney ended up having to pop it back to Maydard having just eaten up the space Yeah, and it was just it was just brilliant brilliant defending Yeah, and every time he got the ball in the tack he made something happen yeah. as well yeah beautiful yeah. like he was yeah. a difference maker like as much mm-hmm. as yeah like those that centre pairing are, are tasty on yeah. Toulouse's side he was the the really not just international class but actually world class like caliber in that in that in that yeah. center zone he was that I would name a better 13 in world rugby right now it's, I it's, would challenge you to do so my yeah. only little thought is maybe Ben Smith as we've called for the All Blacks to play at 13 but he hasn't been all season yeah. so he's a non-factor it is a non-factor but, uh, but like as far as us solving the All Blacks problems we've addressed that maybe Ben Smith is the answer but yeah no as far as 13s are concerned I can't name a better 13 than Gary Ringrose no maybe you can Jay Davis is going to be an argument no not but for, I just disagree. Me, not, yeah, not, yeah. Like, he, doesn't just have, dis- he doesn't have that defensive it, no, yeah, instinct in him. He doesn't. Um, but Gary, like for that Leinster backline, which was a more functional Edinburgh esque Leinster backline, served as the Bill Matt in there in the sense that he was just he was making things happen. He yeah. got the ball, and all of a sudden there was danger and jinkiness and yeah. trouble for the defenses. Yeah, that wasn't just created by the shape or the structure. Yeah, it was just it was, individual yeah. brilliance. Yeah. Which um, is like I love the look of our back line when we have actually uh, Larmer at fullback and Gary at thirteen yeah. because it's just it's a lot of danger mm. ball in hand yeah, for yeah. any defence to be reading and it pulls teams apart and yeah. then it, normally what it ends up happening is it creates space for others. Yeah. You saw like Rory O'Loughlin's try against Bath, great example of that. So yeah. that jinkiness on the inside and then there's a lovely support line and there's space created already. Larmer did go through. Rory, grab a try. Yeah. You know? Like that's that's what it brings you and it's like that little bit of X factor. Mm. But what, yeah, Gary Ringrose just looked the yeah. classiest player on the park. It, in, it, in it, is, it is important also to mention as much we've talked about Healy and Farley and everyone else, just how much, I, I'm just going to touch on this point because we'll expand it at a later point, but just how much Leinster functioned in that game very similarly to Ireland just as a machine mm-hmm. but just constantly running through like everything. Stuart Barnes wrote about this uh, this weekend as well and he made a good point. He made the NFL comparison between Leinster just for having a playbook that's super long yeah. because what he was noticing is in those tight exchanges like 
when he knew he was getting the ball he was meant to get the ball yeah they had literally every playbook and every player had the playbook in their head and when they call a play you gotta know it yeah and it's details 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 yeah. for the Irish rugby players it's massive and uh, I just think like, there's there's definitely a point there you know Sexton has got inspiration from Tom Brady who he hadn't heard of until Joe introduced him to it yeah there's an NFL comparison between what's going on in Irish rugby right now and uh, as mm-hmm. compared to you know the Dave Rennie free flowy philosophy which Leinster leaned on at times but this week it was all about play Joe play Schmidt play, yeah. play by play like they're just running ferocious key yeah. ball and some serious There's carries all yeah. kinds of NFL mm-hmm. comparisons like they were getting two man coverage on, 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 on you know James Ryan so they switched it up and went to someone else and then like they just have those options all the time and yeah. everyone knows what their role is yeah. and like they can eat away minutes off a clock with just a really yeah. long offensive set. Yeah. They can do that. They can strike at, at, at important times. You know, it's very mu- there's very much a sense when Irish teams are playing a game of like an offense and a defense more than even with some teams. It's like there's an o- this is an offensive set. Mm-hmm. We're kicking to the corner. We're winning our thing. We're doing our plays. And then mm-hmm. this is a defensive set. You're here. You know, yeah, yeah. It's a lot less, you know, flowy perhaps than other teams. But geez, yeah. you can't argue with the results. No. And certainly um, on a weekend like this where it was the four star clash as we build, as most people build. Yeah. Because it was and is the only one yet. And the only way it can happen again is if we meet somewhere down the line. Yeah. As I would be okay with because I love Toulouse. Toulouse. Like, they're like, a fantastic club. And I think for French rugby, we've hearkened on the point before, it's fun fantastic to see them back and yeah. doing, doing things in Europe Listen, and top of tours they're gonna beat and Bath. playing that style of rugby they they're, are going to beat, beat Bath, Bath. They're gonna, a lot of those boys are going to go off and learn about test rugby now go yep. play for France and we'll, we'll learn about them and they'll learn about rugby at the highest level mm-hmm. and then we'll come, come back, back with a quarter final to play. with a quarter final to play and yeah. against whomever they're going to be sweating and even away from like Toulouse yeah. more so and that's historically true as well more so than any other French club they can go do away. travel yeah. yeah and they don't don't shirk from it their fans and their fans well. travel too yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they know the, they know the necessity of it they're one of the few clubs that know what it takes mm. to win four times <laughs> but you know what it was one of the points that, that you had noticed as well but just watching the game back on the television um, one of the things that's, that was really appreciated like there was a lot of gratuitous to Toulouse fan face that was shown mm. by the camera but it was just revealing in their faces that their sort of dismay at certain times and their happiness at certain yeah. times, just how they understood the game and they yeah. understood what the important oh, moments yeah, were. Yeah. Like it wasn't necessarily the yeah. tries that made them the most glum. It was it little was, knock-ons. It was little moments and collisions yeah, yeah. that was like, you yeah. know. They yeah. were cut to them and they were like, oh no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. isn't what we hoped would <laughs> no, be. What we really thought we were we could picturing do. the ideal scenario it wasn't this. And yeah, like yeah. They, they, this was all fears of what could happen. Because like it happens yeah, a lot yeah. in the RDS. It's something that we often, like I, I get nervous looking at all of those same as any te- any supporter of any club I suppose when a big team's coming to your home patch or like just a, a class out, an outfit you see all the ways that it can go wrong and then you, mm. you, you prey on them and you fear them but then you also picture the ways it can go right and like I, I'm sometimes a bit more foggy on them with Leinster than any other team purely because I'm too close to the bone but uh, like this one was definitely one that early doors there were good signs on the pitch mm. and even in, even though the first half was tight it was more the picture that I had liked to see rather than the, the scare yes. like the pace of the game was dictated entirely by Leinster yes. tempo wise it was Leinster's just, tempo it's, it's, enough, um, it's, it's like it's not rhythm, it's not even rhythmic it's just it's functional like they, it, it was it, it was in a sense ugly Leinster that arrived yeah, as we yeah. spoke of last week but they just they bullied and tired and beat Toulouse mm-hmm. and like no other team because they have such talent coming through that they're just building layers on top of it yeah. so they lit- they have the ability to plan a week yeah. around the opposition's weaknesses yeah and they did that with Toulouse yeah. you know they yeah. did they just like everything that Toulouse won't don't want to happen mm-hmm. you know Keane Healy's going to be running through them they, yeah. they want Ryan to get the ball so they can tie him up and he can't do his little weird body movement that works against everyone else because we know how what he's doing them. yeah I still don't yeah. know quite the ins and outs of that but Toulouse are the only team to yeah. stuff it yeah <laughs> they have, like yeah. even when he tries and wriggles free he just gets they, it's, the, yeah. it's the second shove I think yeah same they, time for they, they do a struggle yeah. and he was double marked as well and he struggled to both, get his usual go bo- for both of those guys often stop on the initial com- contact and have a second shove yeah. so I think what Toulouse are doing is literally making that initial contact staying on their feet and then hitting and then them going, again going for the second shove, the second shove. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's what they were doing to those guys and they were looking forward to those moments yeah. and instead it was Keane Healy running through them <laughs> in the yes. middle of, of yeah, yeah. one of their poor lads who yeah. didn't see him coming but it was also um, like, like you're talking about uh, as far as attacking sets and killing the clock but also just making them work yeah. what, like there are days 
uh, in Leinster rugby when you see like the first line, the first attacking line out, the first defensive set is a killer strike move that cuts open yes. and things. But it was almost a sense that they didn't want that. No, they wanted to hold the ball. And the first, the first attacking set that we had ended in a steal, but it ended up in a steal after like twenty odd phases. Mm. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to be going short. They wanted to make it physical, resource the rook as best they can. Obviously, it was inaccurate in the end. It was Key and Healy. He yeah. fell off a clear out. He it wasn't that he wasn't there, and it was a yeah. shame because it was a great, uh, great Except set for him, for him as well. Yeah. He made some great uh, moments, but he didn't make the clear out, and then the turnover came. But it was like that's what they wanted to do: move them around a little bit yeah. with intricate little plays, misdirection, mm-hmm. but in the tide as well. They didn't want to go too wide, too quick. They didn't want to cut them open in the center too quick. Yeah. They wanted to make sure they got the bludgeoning work in yeah. first, and made them like you po- pointed mm-hmm. out at the start when we started breaking down this is like get them in such a defensive mindset where like. When not not only ball, not, not only are, has all the things like you're talking about that we've prepared defensively for, like hitting Ryan, hitting uh, Furlong, now that's not happening. But there's also a set of 30 phases that we have to defend knowing that that's not happening. Yeah. So it's just like we have to worry about uh, all these people. And then and suddenly there is a turnover and we have to play a bit of rugby. But we can't do it at our pace. Yeah. Because it's We're all a little knackered. knackered. Our legs yeah. are heavy. We're tired. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I just think it was like expert dismantling of, yeah. of, of, a, of, a, of a dangerous, brilliant team. Brilliant team. Who, to their credit, and I can't say it enough, when they were forced to make those tackles, really did step up. Yeah, they, they were ferocious hits. Playing. They kept like, and then, like that, that's probably why the try at the end, the, the Colby try, they did deserve it ultimately because they did never yeah. stop playing at Le- all, and it was just not. Yeah, yeah, they didn't dictate any of the game. Leinster always leak late tries, and that is by far the late try that has bothered me the least as yes. a Leinster fan I yeah. just thought it was they were well good for it yeah. it was a cracking game of rugby yeah. um, and I just they, yeah Chan Cheslin Cheslin, Cheslin put up a highlight in the RDS no yeah. other sure I was live to see I was there to see it live yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was class he's, he's yeah. quality yeah, yeah. so that, that whole Toulouse outfit are still tournament contenders also shout out Cheslin Coley, Coley again just for that little play that defensive play that held I think it was Luke McGrath oh yeah that was incredible amazing it? yeah it was like some jiu-jitsu move where like Luke McGrath was off the base of a dominant scrum it was an argument for Mr. P try but it wasn't anyway but uh, McGrath picked and went and he was there but for Ches and Colby wrapping him initially and then wrapping around and his arms were nowhere so his legs got the ball yeah, yeah. love to see that like he was all contorted in a little turtle shell <laughs> and wrapping him up with the legs yeah, beautiful yeah. play yeah, yeah. Like, and was, like, just to show um, as you more. say it was like something out of a jiu jitsu yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it looked like something. something like that it was amazing yeah. so yeah no, that was a great little play also another great play was him ducking under Scott Fardy's shoulder with like barely, yeah, a, was barely a metre to work with on the touchline and then scampering off and having to be snaffled later yeah, he's he's fired yeah, yeah. completely, and they they remain a dangerous outfit, mm-hmm. and they'll be good for this loss. That'll be a, a yeah. This is a good learning from them because they were coming off, I think, ten in a row wins, yeah, including the win they had against us, which was only a one point win, but it yes. was still in, in, they, in, it, in Toulouse. It was still like Toulouse were still like people were writing them off uh, before that thing in terms of the coat. I remember what people were talking about. They were expecting, fully expecting the defending champs Leinster after a romp thumping win against Wasps to just go and do the business. And like there, uh, there were points at that game where that was going to happen. Yeah. Before the Luke, Luke McGrath, the intercept uh, pass, that looked like how the game was yeah, going because yeah. Leinster had the lead. This looked like this was going to be the next try to pick yeah, them yeah. Out, out of sight. But Toulouse struck back and it was like, beautiful moments is what rugby's all about really yeah. but it was like this was the lesson they got where they didn't get to, the, the pace of the game wasn't theirs there mm. were like little pernickety moments in the first half in that game like their coach on the sideline touching Larmer and roughing yes. him up a bit and like like one particular line out call in the first 10 minutes I remember that was just wrong <laughs> like they got the ball when they shouldn't have it was it was our ball but yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah. this kind of stuff that just happens a bit more for the home side than the away side and that's a f- that's a factor in rugby it's, it it's is. something yeah, yeah. we can't complain about it when we're on the receiving mm-hmm. end but this was a week where it wasn't for Toulouse and they uh, they were probably shocked as to just far, just how how good Leinster were but also how far behind they were in the end how it took them the, to yeah. the 80th minute to score a try I that's think, very yeah, unlikely that's very unlikely yeah. I think outside of like in, in terms of domestic teams mm-hmm. there's nobody who can do that to Toulouse no, there's nobody who can do quite like Leinster can do to teams mm-hmm. you saw them do it with Scarlets as well to just have the time and to focus on a team of the luxury to prepare the boys in such a way mm. to, to plan out your weapons in such a way you know they did it with Saracens as well they just picked them apart where they're weak mm-hmm. and um, it, it's like it's it's next level stuff I mean yeah. I'm not, I know I'm a fan but it's 
It like, is. Nice it, I, it, though, yeah. so, like I don't the crusade. Like nobody can come to Dublin and win. The crusaders, yeah, similar the crusaders, to what the crusaders do in Super Rugby. Yeah, but they, they couldn't come to Dublin and win. I don't believe so. No, no I probably don't think Leinster could could head down there no. and win. Either. Leinster I, couldn't head to Christchurch and win no. either because the crusaders are still the crusaders. Exactly. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but like you yeah, know, coming to Dublin is such a, a big thing that we mm. keep forgetting when in there in our ball of nerves. You'll have to forgive us in podcasts yeah, to come yeah. in the week of our probably our preamble for for Leinster fixtures is probably not going to be as accurate as for other fixtures just because we're seeing too many worry worrying thoughts yeah, swirling yeah, yeah. in the brain which was definitely a factor of this week i remember thinking along a similar lines when when saris were coming to town and then yeah, it's as often as a, as a, what one of the nice luxuries of being a leinster fan is that i'm very often pleasantly surprised when that happens yes. as to just how ahead of us as, as much as we think we do know a little bit about rugby at least but no no enough to be doing the podcast and yeah, we do yeah. talk detail we tend to get more right when other teams are on the line rather than leinster because we're just true. a little bit too focused yeah, yeah. on it um, but yeah, no, this was a, this was a, just a very satisfying outing, and mm-hmm. and another statement. We're talking about teams that made statements. Like Toulouse have already made, announced their arrival in this tournament. Leinster, this is their their like we're here to win it type of type of buzz. Saris, I'm pretty sure that their 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 one was in Scotston. It, they won't yeah. get all the plaudits, but they they did it early on, and they, they did like we highlighted. They're in purring long mode, but they're still there. And then there's Racing, and there's Toulouse. Mm. Who are the French challenge? There's Montpellier potentially if Edinburgh if any if Edinburgh are to falter, but I don't think potential no. winners. No. no, like I'm looking Racing, I'm looking Toulouse, and I actually am more leaning towards Toulouse because some of my like those four stars mean mean a lot more than some of the big purchases and a, like Racing style of play. I'm, it's just that they're back to their roots and they're playing yeah. with this young academy and like as much as you can tout big purchases. Just that little acquisition of Cheslin Colby and Jerome Kano. Yeah. Like they're too perfect. And that's all you need. Yeah. And then you yeah. can have your a catalyzed yeah. well, especially Len- Leinster do the same thing. Like as yeah. far whenever there's a, an import the probably exception of Joe Tamani this year, because he actually I think asked to come and play because he was that impressed yeah, 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 yeah. But that, that was but like the acquisitions they have, gaps in, in the squad. You want to be using your whole squad, but Scott Fardy, a nice Yes. guy from a world away who's had a, a, a glittering career but also played on the other side of the world so just have him in the dressing room same as what Kaino is providing for them and Fel Moina, um, just an all black in two all blacks in the pack in the dressing room yeah. great thing but also have your French lads around there who are keen to play under them and then like in, in Leinster we've had James Lowe a lovely acquisition for the last few years yeah. Gibson Park a bit of speed nice to encourage our nines who tend to be Irish nines a little bit more yeah, deliberate yeah. and slow than Kiwi nines who are flicking it Has, out hasn't quite um, been James Lowe's year this year just because I no. feel like we've shifted from the Chiefs mould mm. into a more Joe Schmidt mould just yeah. a little bit yeah. um, I, I, but you oh know, he's they, still fire man. certainly yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's still fire and we're playing you know um Wasps this week, and he's back from his and two week. He's back from his. This could be so, back so with a bang. It'd, it'd be it'd be nice to see us open up and start running the ball a bit against Wasps, yeah. Uh, yeah. who like while potentially dangerous, are such an eternal disappointment to me that I can't see them. Well, it was like I mentioned it earlier in the podcast, but if yeah. someone can explain it to me, why do they not have two stars in their jersey? They yeah, won the thing twice. Why is there no two star? Like it's just because it's the Coventry Wasps. It's the new Coventry Wasps. They're not the London Wasps. Maybe anymore. that's it. I don't know. Like they it just like you were you were just saying this. They just get too much wrong. And like Christian Wade is gone now. Um, even like some of the players they've been leaning on Beal and like in seasons gone by. Well, their business Beale's model is out of whack as well. Yeah. They have no academy system really. This is just a traveling franchise that has settled in Coventry for no discernible reason. They play in a terrible stadium. Um, like it's just nothing is right for yeah. nothing's right over there, yeah. and it, it, it just they replace Cipriani, an Englishman who plays a running style of rugby. Let him go, bring in Lima Sapuanga, former All mm-hmm. Black of sorts, to play a sort of similar kind of game, but it's all a bit watered down. Sapuanga doesn't know what he's doing over there. He doesn't at all. They, they don't really know what he's doing over there either. No. It's just no. He actually yeah. like, and he got he would talk about the other game briefly. Then the other thing that happened in that pool was X was a uh, bath in a trudging slugfest in that absolute quagmire of a pitch they have over there uh, yes they won by two points against Wasps in a dreary bludgeoning game that at one point in it Lima Sopawonga got red card got himself yellow carded yellow carded for a very very clumsy mm. terrible reckless challenge yeah. and I, like Wasps I just don't know where their heads are at but also what their game plan yeah. is this year They're, like what I normally associate with them because I've like we've played them a lot in, in the last few years and it's not like Christian Wade has never f- never taken the field against us for Wasps and not scored a try no, I'm indeed. pretty sure I'm right in saying and that they, and they would always score tri- fine tries against us yeah. well the only time that hasn't happened was this year or yeah. well like last year now but the first game of, of 
the tournament actually um, was when we absolutely put put them to the sword hose them and yeah. it, like, it just seems like there's nothing wrong well, they, they were a team with, with, with Beal and LaRue and mm. Cipriani yeah. and then Wade and that was a team you know it was very That's clear it's dangerous yeah. Very, and then yeah. Daly as well it's like very yeah. clear what they're doing yeah. you know this is what we are that's an identity now yeah. they don't have an identity at all yeah. and as much as Leinster jitters are going to arrive on game day I don't see them to be the yeah. team to beat Leinster at all yeah well it's um, de- definitely it's a pot- possible banana skin because like any the, game is I guess yeah, yeah, I suppose it is and Leinster can still lose top position if they blow that one because you're going to have mm. to expect to lose to win so it's it's not home and host in that yeah. regard but with that being said that's exactly the reason I think Leinster are going to go over and do something similar to what Saracens did this week I'd expect like four tries no more no less I just, <laughs> do, I just a win yeah, th- that's so, yeah. I think I think we'll score tries against them yeah. um, I just I don't I rate Wasps this year so no, I'm I'm do it. but I do rate Leinster and I do rate Toulouse and I think they're going to do for both of those boys Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're new here, please hit like and subscribe down below if you want to see new more videos and all that kind of lovely stuff. But also please uh, leave some comments down below because we, we enjoy the chat.